Hi, it's Ron for Cineroid Canada, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Cineroid, the EVF4 RVW Electronic Viewfinder. This is the EVF4 RVW, which comes in a really nice soft-sided case. Let's talk about some of the special features about this. First of all, the built-in loop has a plus minus one and a half diopter range. It's a two times magnifier. With this little catch on the bottom, we can flip it open so that we can just use it as a screen. We can also remove the loop portion itself by depressing this little tab and it slides out. When you do that, you're left with this little frame here which is acting as your sunshade. We can also remove this entire frame by releasing the two catches on either side and we're left with the actual panel. Now this panel, it's quite special. It's actually the retina panel from the iPhone 4S. It's a three and a half inch diagonal with a resolution of 960 by 640 pixels, which is going to give you a really nice sharp clear image with great color fidelity. The optical element in the loop itself has an anti-fog coating on it and we've got a couple of small holes in the rubber eye cup to also relieve any moisture to prevent fogging up. There's a few different ways of mounting the EVF, so let's go through some of the features on the unit itself. So we'll remove the loop, set that aside. So let's go through all the different features on, this, uh, on the EVF4 RVW. On the back, we have all our input-output control ports and our power options. Starting on this side here, we've got input on a full-size HDMI A plug, input on HDSDI, and output on HDSDI as well. And it has loop-through capability, so whether you're inputting HDMI or SDI, you've got your output on the HDSDI. As far as powering it, we have an input plug here which has a cable that comes with it for optional DTAP use. And the input voltage range is 6 volts to 17 volts. We also have a battery plate, which simply plugs on there and screws in. And this is a multi-vendor battery option. And included in the kit, we have three battery plates for Canon BP911, Canon LPE6, and Sony NPF style battery. So I'm just going to take one of these, mount it, and it clicks into place. And we'll take a Sony battery here. This is an NPF battery, and slides in. This is the on off switch. Looking at the left side of the EVF, we have four function buttons that are fully programmable. And you can have peaking, false colors, waveform and vector scope, one-to-one -one pixel ratio. Any of the features that are built into the EVF can be programmed to these buttons. Directly above it, we have the control wheel. This is for navigating through the menu system. And this wheel is also a switch that we can depress for engaging or disengaging any of the functions in the menu. There's also a three and a half millimeter headphone socket. On the left side, we have a mounting position for whether you're putting it on a Noga arm or any other method of mounting. Comes pre-mounted with a quarter 20 tap on the bottom. You can also mount it on the side or on the top. And Cineroid does include a second uh, mounting uh, disc that we can mount on the top or the side. Also included in the package is a mini ball head with a cold shoe mount, which you can use to mount on your camera and then attach it to the EVF. Also for the loop portion, we ha have an extra spacer frame that will fit in there. This detaches in here, we slide the spacer frame in if we need extra 
diopter range. On the bottom of the unit, next to the mounting position, we have a mini USB plug for updating your firmware, which you can do through your PC computer. Let's take a quick look at the menu system, which is accessed by depressing the control wheel. Control 1 and Control 2 allow us to turn on and off the various features and filters built into the EVF4 RVW, such as peaking, false colors, zebra, waveform, overscan, underscan, crop guides, center markers. Setting screen 1 and 2 is where we actually adjust the threshold of these various filters. So we can adjust the peaking filter, for example, and its threshold, clip guides, and where they start and stop. We can adjust the color of the monitor, bring up color bars if necessary, adjust the audio controls. The system screen allows us to set the input from HDMI to HDSDI. We can actually save settings in two banks, zero and one. We can also see the firmware screen here, which is fully upgradable and the exit screen. Let's take a look at some of the special filters built into the EVF4 RVW. The first set of filters is uh, designed for focus assist. And I'd like to take a look at the filter called Peaking. Peaking is a contrast detection filter. And essentially what it does is it highlights sharp edges in red. And it really makes it, things stand out when they're in focus. And you can see as I'm racking through the focus, we've got a red outline on the object that's in focus. Another useful filter is the monochrome filter. And we can add this in combination with peaking and turn the whole image into black and white. And then the red really stands out. This is particularly useful when you're filming an object that is red. The last filter that we can add for focus assist is the one-to-one -one pixel. We can essentially zoom in one-to-one -to, -one to the video feed coming out of your camera and really see when things are in focus. I've pre-assigned the function buttons on the side of the EVF for all of these different focus assist filters, but of course you can reassign the function button to any filter that you require. The second set of filters that I'd like to take a look at on the EVF4 RVW are used to help you set your exposure. So let's jump right in and take a look at them. The first one is called Waveform, and I'm just going to engage it now. And you can see along the bottom we've got this graph that's just popped up. And what that is is it's indicating the various levels of exposure in the frame, where it's dark in the frame, there's not a lot of the graph, and as it gets brighter, you've got these little hills that pop up. And let's take a look at what happens when we start to play with the exposure. So I'm going to open up the iris a little bit. And as you see, the waveform is moving upwards into the overexposed area. And then we're going to roll it back down. We're going to go right beyond, stop down beyond a properly exposed image. And you can see that the waveform is moving down. So moving up is brighter, overexposed. Moving down is darker towards the underexposed. Let's just move it back to decent exposure, right around there. The waveform is available in three different uh, configurations. This is a small one that goes along the bottom. We can also have it going along the bottom and on the right-hand side. So the right-hand one is a representation of the image going from right to left, up and down. And you can see this little graph in the corner, in the bottom right corner, that's called a vector scope. That's used to helping us uh, set our colors, usually used more in a lab environment or when you're uh, setting up a monitor or a camera. We're not going to take a look at that too much right now. And the last variation of the waveform is simply a magnified version of it. So our image has become a little bit smaller up in the top left corner, but we can see our waveform a lot clearer. And as we're modifying or changing our exposure by opening or closing the iris, you can see it really moving. And so we can just tweak our image right to where it needs to be. That's, that's a really good image right there for exposure. So that's waveform. Second set of filter that I wanted to take a look at is called false colors. I'll just turn that on. 
what false colors does is it assigns a different color for different exposure values and it's based on the IRE scale. And let's take a look at what happens when we change exposure on this one. So as we open up the iris and it becomes hotter, you see the red creeping in. Red is clipped, 100 IRE. Let's just take a look at our image. You can see it's very overexposed. Put the false colors back on. And when we stop down the iris, let's go all the way to the other end, to the underexposed. We're going to see more blues uh, moving in. And blue represents underexposure. And yes, of course, the image is very dark. So let's roll back to decent exposure, just right around there. And that's a good exposure right there. There are two different versions of the false colors. This one is uh, set up as the Marshall monitors values, and there's also the Airy standard, and that's available as well. So depending on which one you're used to, they're both available. The last filter I want to take a look at is zebras. Let's just turn that on. The zebras are really used to indicate um, areas of the image that are starting to become overexposed as you're filming. So it's kind of like a highlight warning indicator. And as we overexpose, you can see the diagonals coming through on the white and a little bit of red. And the red indicates clipping. And that's quite bright right there. And we just roll through. But what you will see is as we go darker on the image, the zebras simply disappear. So this is really a highlight warning tool that you would use while you're actually filming, whereas the, uh, certainly the false colors you would only use as you're setting up your shot and you're setting up your exposure. You wouldn't actually film with them turned on. And the waveform you might use uh, in both scenarios, either just to set up your exposure or while you're filming as well. But I'll just cut it there. So as we can see, the EVF4 RVW is really a full-featured monitoring solution for the professional cinematographer through the various filters for setting our exposure, such as the waveform. We can even stack the filters and have, uh, let's say, waveform and peaking on there at the same time. So while we're filming, we can be monitoring our focusing and our exposure at the same time. There's a lot of features that we didn't take a look at due to time but we've got various crop guides built in, 2, 3, 5 to 1, 1, 8, 5 to 1, etc. cetera. Uh, we can put the thing into monochrome, fully color balance the screen. Uh, there are color bars available on the, uh, on the EVF, and it's really a complete monitoring solution for anybody who's serious about their filming. So we hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and for more information, please visit our website at www.cineroid.ca.